Assassin's Creed Mirage is a really enjoyable throwback to a more straightforward type of Assassin's Creed game. And although it's not perfect or anything, it's got a lot of stuff going on that it doesn't necessarily say. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 Things Assassin's Creed Mirage Doesn't Tell You. Now this is a game, like I said, it definitely shows you what it's trying to do. And I pretty well like it. I think it does a great job. I do think it definitely shows that it's using the Valhalla tech, kind of a middle ground, like Jake said, in his Before You Buy. I'd recommend that video for a bigger picture, but Assassin's Creed Mirage, honestly, like I said, good game. Let's get into some stuff that it doesn't just tell you right off. Starting off with number 10, chickens can be your allies and they can also be your enemies. There's the usual bunch of environmental objects you can use against enemies in this game. There's hanging rocks, explosives, the usual, but perhaps the most dangerous of them all is the caged chicken. Yeah, I, I didn't in a million years think that this would do anything, but after breaking a chicken cage by mistake, I saw it in action. Uh, the chickens just start attacking anyone in sight, I including you, to be fair. I don't, I don't know if it's supposed to be some reference to Legend of Zelda's famously vengeful chickens or what, but I'm happy it's there. Unfortunately, releasing the chickens isn't usually all that helpful. They tend to get the attention of every guard and that puts them on the alert, which from a sneaking around undetected perspective isn't that great. However, man, is it fun to see the chaos unfold. In Far Cry, you could release these out elephants, but in Mirage you're freeing chickens. They're not quite as effective as elephants, but I just didn't expect anything out of them at all. There's no indication whatsoever these things would attack. It's just something I stumbled on randomly, but every time I do it, I see something that I would just call funny as hell. And number nine, what are the mysterious shards for? Every so often, you can find these guys wandering around Baghdad with a little symbol over their heads. They carry collectibles called mysterious shards. You assassinate them or pickpocket them and the shards are yours. There aren't that many in this game. There's just 10 total and finding them isn't hard. As long as you're synchronizing viewpoints occasionally, you're gonna get most of them marked. And the only ones that are easy to miss are found in towns on the top and bottom of the map outside of the city. You might've found one or two of these things already and if you're wondering if it's worth the effort of hunting them all down, it's not like the Enigmas. Uh, the Enigmas are not worth your time. These collectibles are. I like, they give you something that is good in the end. Near the top of the map, there's an oasis in the middle of the desert. There's a viewpoint nearby, so it's not too hard to miss or anything. You dive underwater, keep swimming down, you find a, a, another Esu temple, which I, they're everywhere in this series. Inside, you find three items locked behind barriers. If you want to unlock them, you got to spend five shards to get the armor, three for the sword, two for the knife. All this stuff is good, but by far the best thing you'll get here is the armor called Milliard's outfit. What makes this costume so powerful is the perk, uh, which makes it so when you air assassinate an enemy, it generates a shockwave that stuns everyone within 15 meters of the target. So you can just decimate entire groups of enemies without breaking a sweat. Just do an air kill and the guys nearby will stand around looking dazed while you pick them off one by one. It's especially great in that it's not gated in any way. Once you're in Baghdad and the open world's fully available, you can run around, get the shards, and unlock this armor right at the start if you want. And number eight is the easiest and fastest way to make money. One thing you'll notice in Mirage is that in contrast to the rest of the series, where you're getting showered with cash, this game's pretty stingy. Main missions rarely get you money. Chests don't usually contain a lot of cash, if any. So what's the best way to actually make the green? It's not from completing contracts, that's for sure. After a while, I felt I was losing money rather than gaining, and I wasn't skipping chests or anything. Maybe I'm just used to pickpocketing being completely worthless and unnecessary in previous Assassin's Creed games, so I ignored it. That was as it turns out, stupid, because people are carrying around a bunch of money. Pickpocketing in Mirage is by far the best way to get cash. The trick here is that you go to the rich section of Baghdad, the area around the palace, better known as the Round City. You got more people, denser crowds, and they all have better stuff to steal. And all it takes to get more cash is hang around this place and steal from everyone. This strategy has the added benefit of getting you a lot of tokens too. These items, uh, which are useful for getting extra extra help in certain missions or calling in distractions from guards. Tokens are another resource you barely get any of normally, but if you pickpocket a lot, you're gonna 
to have more than you're ever going to need. The best thing about all this is that if you think uh, the pickpocketing minigame is annoying, you can actually skip it. Just go to the settings under gameplay and turn on guaranteed pickpocketing. It'll skip the minigame every time. You can just rob people blind without any effort. After a few minutes of that, go to a store, hit the sell all button, and there you go. You're rolling in Baghdad bucks. At number seven, there's a few skills you need to unlock ASAP. Uh, compared to the massive skill trees of the previous Assassin's Creed games, the selection of skills in Mirage is, is actually humble. Uh, not as many choices to agonize over, but the amount of skill points you get is also quite a bit lower, so you gotta be selective about what skill you actually want to invest in. Some of the skills are just way, way better than others, though. Extra tool capacity one, two, and three, they're no-brainers. Get those first. There's no reason to wait on them. Even if you don't think you're going to use tools all that much, it doesn't matter. Get them. They're cheap. Two skill points a pop. They greatly expand your loadout and abilities. Unlike the last three Creed games where sneaking was de-emphasized, you will use these tools in Mirage. They're game changers, and having the full set makes the rest of the game so much more easier as well as more fun, so just get these as soon as you can. I am all in on tools, so anything that makes those better is good. Uh, knife recovery, fantastic for obvious reasons as is the ability to chain together assassinations. There's no double assassination in this game, so to take out two guys standing together, you need the chain assassination skill. Like, feel free to experiment. This game lets you reset your skill points at any time, so you can use different skills in different situations. The one downside to unlocking new tools in the skill tree is that these are only abilities that you can't refund, but honestly, there's no reason to. Just get all the tools unlocked as soon as possible. You'll do fine. And number six, where to get components. Uh, from my experience, this is the hardest thing to get in the game. The materials you need to upgrade tools uh, or components are, are a little rare. Like you get plenty of steel and leather from chests, but component parts much rarer. You can buy these things in stores, but stores take a while to reset their inventory and every store is the same. If you buy out all the components in one, then every store will have no components. Yes, that's not realistic, but this is Assassin's Creed. I think the merchants reset based on a timer, but I'm not sure. Basically don't rely on buying them they're not always going to be available and that is a problem because the upgrades you get for your tools are some of the most significant upgrades in the game the difference between a level one tool and a level three tool is pretty significant like they get way better from upgrading uh with everything i've tried i found the best way to get components is the most straightforward way just completing contracts uh that's it you got to take these contracts uh that show up on the board in the bureau each one gets you 45 component parts which is a lot considering how many you get from chests like which is three or four at best while doing these check in at vendors often to see if their inventory is reset and there you go it's not the most exciting answer but these things are necessary upgrading the assassin tools should be highest priority uh, not necessarily all of them but at least a few because seriously these things are monstrous when fully upgraded the knife level three makes dead bodies disappear that's j insane and the jump to level three and basically any other tool is about the same and number five, smoke bombs are still extremely powerful. No surprise for returning fans. The smoke bomb was always the I win button of the series, and it's still extremely powerful here. They're not quite as powerful right from the start. The smoke dissipates pretty quickly, and the range isn't the best, but with a few upgrades, it's killer. If you want to quickly deal with the mysterious shard holders, the enigmatic sharders, I told you I had to be careful how I said that, uh, but if you want to deal with them, just throw some smoke at them. There's a group of enemies in the way, throw a noisemaker, then some smoke you don't want to fight a big armor guy yeah smoke if you got him right smoke is the solution to every problem and although i wouldn't recommend that for real life i love it here the only problem is that you'll need to upgrade it to at least level two so you can get the silent blast perk to make it so the smoke bomb doesn't make noise why do they fight? Oh lies dead already. If you have that, sneaking is more or less solved. Smoke bombs are that good. And number four, you can peek around corners. They just expect you to figure this one out on your own, but you, yeah, this is gonna save you some hours of frustration. It's very simple. You can peek around corners by equipping a weapon like throwing knives, standing near the corner of a wall and pressing L2. Now, instead of the usual aiming stance, you're hugging the corner and getting a good look at the enemies that are there. In tight spaces, it's extremely helpful because targeting enemies this way also marks them as if they were tagged by your bird. So even if you don't want 
want to waste precious knives, it's still a useful mechanic that you can use to plan out your stealth approach in a congested interior area. Seriously, the fact they don't tell you about this is... I mean, it's frustrating, but when you realize it's there, it's like, yes, this is great. And number three is eavesdropping. The game does not explain it, but eavesdropping is back. I guess they just expected everybody to remember it because they don't bother explaining what you're supposed to do. What's weird about it is just standing next to somebody isn't good enough to eavesdrop. You have to sit in a chair or a bench nearby. Then you can press the button to listen in on their conversation. That's the thing that I think is throwing people off. Nowhere is it explained that you're supposed to, you know, blend in. So people just stand around the radius of the conversation wondering what's supposed to be going on in any other game including in this series that would probably be enough but here you got to do it assassin's creed one style by sitting somewhere nearby maybe it sounds stupid and obvious to you but that's it's hindsight i don't want to admit how long i just stood around wondering if the game was bugged or anything because i thought you know they stopped doing this in the first one and the first one was a long time ago at number two, now I love a good stealth game, but sometimes you're just sitting in one place waiting for an enemy to stop searching for you, and that can be a drag. A key part of stealth involves at least some waiting around, but what if there was a way to skip all that? In Mirage, there is. If you're like me, you're probably going to be spending a lot of this game running away from guards and pulling down wanted posters. Eventually, you're going to start getting tired of the longest, most tedious part of any escape sequence. The endless waiting around while guards are still on alert status. Like, you're hidden, you're in a spot they're never going to find you, but now you got to wait second after agonizing second for the enemy alert status to switch back to normal. It's tedious. Mirage gives us a way to speed this up just by using the wait command. In Mirage, the only way to pass time is to wait while sitting on a bench. And when you do it, time jumps forward 12 hours. So if it's day, it becomes night. If it's night, it becomes day. You can do this while the enemy is on alert. If they don't know your location, you can sit down, jam that wait button, and then when you get control back, you're in the clear it's small but after a while it's really starting to get sick of waiting around and this little trick speeds it way up and finally, at number one, thoroughly explore the order assassination missions for opportunities to unlock special assassinations. Since Unity, the Assassin's Creed series is toyed with including these big set piece assassination missions, and Mirage's take on this is probably some of the best in the series, actually. These missions give you multiple different ways to approach your objective, but one thing that's possible players might miss are these special cinematic assassinations marked with a skull symbol. Each major target has at least one special assassination, which can be unlocked by completing sub-objectives in the environment to lure your target out or get past their defenses so you can take them out unaware. Some are more elaborate than others, some are pretty easy to miss, so be sure to thoroughly explore each mission to unlock these special assassinations because they're pretty satisfying when you trigger them. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is a course a subscription so click subscribe don't forget to enable notifications and as always we thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter at falcon the hero we'll see you next time right here on game ranks